Hi YouTube, Bushido Mar here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to share with you 10 things I wish I knew when I started The First Descendant. I have been playing the game since launch and it's just such a cool game and I'm having so much fun playing this game. That's why I'm also pulling out tons of content related to the game because it's actually so good. Let's get it just started. Let's get with tip number one. Focus on the story. The story is your main way to progress to hard mode and hard mode is where you unlock end game. Um, the story is actually pretty cool. Typically in every zone there are from two to four missions that you need to clear. So basically just follow the purple missions that you have on your map and you will be unlocking the next zone and this way you will progress from one zone to another zone to the to the next one and usually between the bigger zones there is also a boss fight and this is the way you unlock your hard mode so this is really the way to go so focus to the story stick to it if you want to progress a little bit faster in this game tip number two don't focus too much on your gear while you are still on your story and you're still progression gear matters more towards the end game min maxing it optimizing your gear is something that you should pay a little bit more attention in most cases when you hit a progression wall and this is when you for example go to a boss fight and you don't don't do enough damage and you feel weak or you go to some you know group content some some dungeons and stuff like this and you don't have enough damage in those cases yes you can pull back a little bit open your inventory optimize a little bit your website your gear um your external components and in this case yes but in in the in the majority of the time while you are progression through the story you will be just you know equipping the the higher level stuff that you're getting with the better stats and but don't bother too much that's my tip tip number three power leveling Power leveling is a thing you can very quickly, probably within one hour, one hour and a half, you can level from level one, a descendant from level one to level 40. I have a power leveling video. The video is up here. It's a five minute long video. There is a super easy method how to level your descendants, but it is not necessary. Why? Because your progression will level you up throughout, uh, you know, the the story. And yeah, in the beginning, it's not that important. However, you know, power leveling, I want to give you another thing here. Power leveling will work better if you have higher level gear, because the gear in the game, if you progress to a level 100 gear, that's it. You will be able to use 100 level 100 equipment, components and everything on a level one descendant if you unlock a new one. So the, the gear is a forever progression. You hit the level 100 and that's it. So power leveling is a thing, you can do it, but it's not 100% necessary. So the moment you, you, you open up your account, instead of power leveling, focus on the story and unlock more content in the game. Tip number four, mods. Upgrade when you can. Be aware of your materials. Now. When you have mods, and what my personal recommendation in the beginning, when you're doing your story, to, in order to progress a little bit quicker throughout the story, just don't focus that much on your mods. If you have a higher level weapon, you open the weapon, you click recommended mods, put them in there, throw them in there just to have some kind of mods in there. And like literally two missions down, you will already start receiving better weapons. That means that you can unequip the, unequip the mods from this weapon, equip it again on the new weapon. And do this until the point where you hit a progression wall. Progression wall, I call something that is basically when you cannot kill a boss because you don't have enough damage or something like that. You can obviously put a little bit of, you know, upgraded mods into your weapons in order to have more damage and stuff like that. If you want to do that, you can absolutely can but the way i've done i've done this is just basically i didn't waste it any time on this until i didn't hit a progression war where i felt super weak and i needed to bump up my damage so in the beginning just don't bother that much about your mods only do it when you hit a progression wall about mods there is something else that you need to pay attention if you decide to do if you decide to upgrade your mods Keep in mind that the upgrades, the higher you go, the more expensive they will be. And in the beginning, your Cooper shards, those are uh, these materials over there, they are um, limited. 
so you won't have that much you will get some in in from you know rewards from the story you will be getting some here and there from killing mobs in 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 the in the missions and stuff but they are limited so be aware that don't overspend them especially on those plus seven plus eight upgrades on your mods because your materials will just vanish i will be uploading a, a cooper shard farming guide on my on my channel this week you can watch this and how you can efficiently grind those a little bit more and get these but be aware spend your materials wisely number five materials don't bother about them in the beginning again like i said focus on the story focus on the quests um you don't have to worry about cooper shards you don't have to worry about gold in the game you will be getting these with the progression and you know efficiently if you want to if you want to hit hard mode and this is my real biggest recommendation from this video the sooner you hit hard mode the better for you because you really unlock the real game after you hit hard mode and hard mode is actually not that hard it's just called hard mode it's just the, the end game of the game right so everything until you know mi like probably the middle of the progression if you're around the devourer devourer or the pyromaniac uh, as a boss this is considered probably mid game and then once you unlock the hard mode then you enter the, the, the end game i would consider right so anything material wise in this in this aspect doesn't matter that much because once you unlock hard mode you will be able to efficiently grind for the specific materials that you really need whether it is gold or cooper or uh, some upgrade and, and, and enhancing materials and stuff like that so don't bother that much in the beginning about the materials tip number six crafting so the sooner you start crafting in the game the better for you in the late game because every crafting is bound to time and it takes time for you to craft certain materials so for example if i want precision face exchanger those are the the items that you use if you for example unlock a new legendary i call them legendary see the yellow weapons basically when you unlock a new yellow weapon it's level one and right now i'm already at 100 level 100 in terms of items and weapons so if i want to bump up this legendary to from one to 100 i use one of these right but those are limited it takes a little bit of time for me to craft these so for example if i want to craft one right now I can straight away go here and it will take me 10 minutes to craft these, right? So keep in mind that, you know, this is time related crafts. It takes time for you to craft. And the ones that I recommend you uh, focus on in the beginning are those, the, the blue ones. Those, those are really important. This was, um, you know, I constantly keep on um, crafting these because those are super important you have the materials most of the time just every time you go to town put it it will take you um 20 minutes for the smaller crafts and it will take you um 10 hours for the bigger crafts like these right so always you have them if you have the materials for base exchangers or for fine adjustment control access just use them craft it you will thank yourself later tip number seven look at the map and scan the map with your eyes so for example if i go to any zone right so to any zone first of all I, I would like to let you know that in each zone there is a limitation of the amount of players that are in each zone so in each zone there can be only four descenders and only four people are in each zone right uh, sometimes you can enter a zone and there will be no one in here but in this case i do have someone in the zone and this is what i want to showcase you with this tip so when you are in a zone and let's say those are the four missions that i need to do in order to unlock the next zone right so scan and look for the white dots the white dots are the other players that are in this specific zone and sometimes they are stacked around in this area or in this area and you can see and roughly, you know, calculate and see where are is, is there already an active group in this zone doing one of the main story missions or any of the missions? And you just go there and cra and you join their party and they might be even already finishing the mission and you get a free, f free finish of a mission. So you, you just progress through the story by hopping into missions and 
you can save yourself tons of time this way, right? So just scan the map and look where are the other players. There is no, there is no order in you completing any of those missions. As long as they're purple missions, for me, they're not purple because I already completed the story. But if they, if those missions are purple in, in color, it doesn't matter which one you pick. The only, the only missions usually is the last mission that is um, before a, a dungeon. And those are, you know, yeah, you'll, you'll see them immediately, which are those missions. And this will unlock the next one, right? So scan the map, look where the other people join their party. This way you will be able to kill mobs faster and clear out those missions in a matter of minutes. All right, tip number eight, bosses. When you when you fight bosses, and usually when I mentioned progression wall, you know, when you when you hit some, you know, some kind of mission or some kind of boss that you cannot clear out from the first try, you'll say, man, I don't have enough damage and man, why I keep dying so quick and so easy. Well, the first progression war for me that was a boss that, you know, I found a little bit complicated to clear and it didn't happen from the from the first three times. I went over here and my recommendations is look at this over here. It says recommended attribute resistance. This means the game recommends you to put this amount of resistance for you to be able to at least survive it and not get one shot from the boss. Most likely, you might still get one shot from the boss, but the resistances will really make your life easier. And this stands for all bosses. This guy over here, pain in the butt as well. In the beginning, I was, I, I probably took me 10 attempts to, to kill this from the first time, right? But fire resistance is the key. And my tip over here is don't focus on modules with resistances, right? Um, I will talk about modules in a second. But over here on your descendant, go here and write anti, like antibody, and those are the mods that give you resistance, right? So look at this one. Let's say we want to kill and we want to fight him, right? Devourer Toxic Resistance will give me 154 resistance. This is an unleveled mod. It will just take you a little bit of levels. And this, those are the mods like level 3 or level 4 will all give you tons of resistances. Look at this, for example. I've got this to level 7 and it gives 2.6 enhancement. Um, it gives me 2.6 fire resistance. This one, level 8, electricity resistance, same thing, 3.1. This is already over the recommended amount, so you will feel so much more better plus not only the not not only the bosses will will give you some some tough times in the future um it, it would be also some certain zones right so if you go for example in the in the last zone when you enter the new zone and you, there will be a pop-up message on the right side that says okay in this zone the mobs are doing electricity damage or the mobs are doing this kind of damage if you have enough room for your mods, keep them in there for this specific, um, you know, um, element damage. This will bump up your survivability a lot. Again, be aware of your materials and don't over upgrade your resistances because they eat up a lot of capacity. Tip number nine. Since we already touched, you know, resistances and stuff like that, I would I wish I knew um, the stats that I would should focus on on my components and stuff like that. And this is an example of a component that will be, you know, not the best in slot, but this is something to look for. In the beginning, it will be very difficult for you to get like double roll um, stats, like double HP and stuff like that. But down the road, you will be able to start seeing those and focus on those. So the stats that I recommend you going for is HP, then you go for defense and then everything else. Right. Everything else can be sometimes, uh, you know, additional modifiers um, like max shield and stuff like that. This one I need to replace, for example, right? This is a garbage one. HP, right? Your health is the be the most important stats. The more you have it, the more you will survive. Max health plus enough resistances in most cases will be more than enough for you with any descender, right? So I highly recommend you Focus those stats always. HP, defense, and the rest. I wish I knew this in the beginning. Number 10. 
don't buy the senders, right? Don't buy the senders and you'll say, okay, all right, man, but do you have ultimate bunny? Yes, I did. I was in the beginning, in the beginning, I thought, all right, I'm not going to spend any money on the senders. I treated myself with only one ultimate descender. I got myself ultimate bunny because I'm just in love with this descender. She's amazing. She does a lot of damage and I just wanted to treat myself. Yes, but in the long run, I will not spend any money on any other descenders right now. My recommendation is don't do it. Reyna, I got super easy, super quick. It took me less than one day to, to get Freyna. Why? Because throughout the story, throughout the missions, I just got lucky drops from the different missions. And then, uh, for example, right now, I'm super close of unlocking Blair. And I'll, I'll show you what I do. So right now I'm at Blair and I already have three of the materials. Right. It takes I need to grind only one specific dungeon. And in this case, for me, uh, this dungeon is over here uh, at the hatchery, the bio lab. This is the one that drops this one and it has a 20 percent, 20 percent drop rate. But those drop rates really don't matter because I already, for example, got the one percent drop rate in one of the first attempts of me getting the uh, I got the module, but I did like already 15 runs in a row for the last couple of hours and I didn't get the, the Blair stabilizer, right? But the moment I unlock this, I go and craft myself the new uh, Descender. So don't spend any money on it. This is a free to play game. This is your progression. This makes the game fun. So my recommendation is don't, don't spend any money on buying Descenders. And here we go. Tip number 11. I highly recommend you pick Ajax. Farm focused Ajax so that you can unlock him as soon as possible. Why I'm telling you this? Because he is a game changer. He's a super convenient descender for boss fights. He's super tanky. If you bump up some extra HP and extra defensive stats on him, he's almost unkillable. You will almost not die in any fight, right? So my recommendation is pick Ajax as soon as possible that you have in the game. Even if you picked another uh, first descender, start grinding for Ajax as soon as possible. I hope I hope you enjoyed this video and this was useful and you found out something that you didn't know about. If I missed something, let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to highlight or pin this comment. Um, and if you watched so far, I would really appreciate your like and subscribe. I will be uploading more guides for the first descendant in the next um, couple of days. I almost upload daily now on YouTube. Plus, I will be streaming almost daily on Twitch on YouTube. I'll see you soon. Good luck.